This is session number three of our annealing experiment or annealing test and I'm going to be shooting again at 200 yards, two different five shot groups. This first five shot group is with the unannealed or non-annealed standard brass and uh, the next obviously will be with the annealed brass. I'll be shooting at the target in the upper left. Now you might notice that timer in the upper left corner of the video. I've included that on all three of our videos and plan to continue including that on um, all the videos of these uh, for this experiment because I'm starting to wonder about the effect that time plays in the size of these groups. I, ideally, I would be shooting both these groups in about the same time period, which then would translate into very similar, let's say, fatigue on the shooter. And I'm kind of wondering if a group that's fired somewhat more quickly, but yet carefully, if that would be a better group than a group that's fired carefully, but painstakingly carefully, very, very slowly. And I wonder if that's going to introduce fatigue and thereby cause worse shots or worse precision. All right, that should be about a good seven minute cool down. Getting ready to shoot the second group. This is the annealed brass this time. And uh, if you watched our previous episode, we shot some extremely consistent ammo last time. And what I'm referring to is the cartridge base to ogive measurement. Now this set is man, it's very, very consistent also, but maybe not quite as consistent, at least in that measurement, as the previous. We've got about three thousandths of variation, three thousandths of an inch of variation, in the cartridge base to ogive measurement uh, for these five rounds. In fact, for these ten rounds, I should say. They're all similar within themselves, but a little bit of variability uh, across the board compared to last time. Again, 200 yards, this time target in the upper right. And again, we've got a little gust coming up, so I'm going to hold for a bit. We're only going to have four readings on the chronograph at best. The first one did not record. Good. Well, the last two are very consistent in muzzle velocity. That felt good. There we go. Back on safe. Well, I shot those two groups a couple of days ago now, and actually I'm getting ready to head out to the range once again to shoot our fourth session of uh, annealed versus not annealed brass. And uh, before I do that though, let's take a few minutes to analyze and review the results. 
again, I fired this group first. This was a standard brass, non-annealed brass, uh, and it gave me a 1 MOA 0.99 MOA group. And then second, I fired the annealed brass, and this one didn't do too good on a five-shot group, 1.76 MOA. Now this rifle, this Ruger Precision Rifle with these same bullets, the 168 grain Sierra tipped match kings, normally comes in, if things are going pretty darn well, at about a 0.7 MOA. So both of these groups were a little bit larger than that kind of standard or that norm, um, but uh, the annealed brass was really high. However, there's really only one round, that first round that I fired, that really uh, set that extreme spread so darn large. The other four, if we called this a flyer, if that was called, if I had called it, I could then pull it out. Uh, but these four actually produced a better group than this five over here, or even of the best four over here. Now let's talk about this. I put a little note, a little freeze frame in the video there that says, you know, pay attention to this because it's going to become important potentially uh, at the end that we're talking about right now. So did you notice that uh, when I was going to chamber that first round, I accidentally had that bolt a little bit far forward, and then when I moved it forward, it, it did pick that case up, but not by the base. It kind of picked it up uh, by the head, uh, the far end, the head end of that cartridge, and tried to shove it in, but uh, it, it didn't shove it in. Now, it didn't dent the case. I checked that before I fired it. I checked it after I returned, uh, but what it might have done, in hindsight it might have done, is it might have... Uh, changed the bullet seating depth or more likely it might have changed the concentricity of that bullet and it might have changed it a fair amount. Maybe not so much that I noticed it because I did look at it um, but uh, it might have changed it and that could be why it threw and flew so high compared to all the rest. I also did not get a chronograph reading on that, and that is not because of some sort of aberrant velocity that the chronograph couldn't figure out or couldn't detect, but because I fiddled with it for so long to get everything going on that, that first shot after I armed the lab radar, uh, the lab radar went to sleep and uh, got out of armed mode because I hadn't shot quickly enough. It's the first time that ever happened, but that is exactly what happened. It was not in armed mode again, and so that I had to turn it on to armed mode, and then I could shoot the other four, and it recorded those perfectly well. Now, these two uh, groups, annealed and not annealed brass, or not annealed, I fired first, and then the annealed, uh, were pretty darn similar in their preparation. This brass was very, very carefully prepared and weight sorted, and all of these groups that I fired today, and in fact what I fired uh, last time in our last video, and what I'm going to fire later on today, the weight of those cases varied by less than a grain. So they were very consistent in that way. The overall or cartridge base to ogive measurement for the standard brass or the standard rounds was 2.064 to 2.068 uh, inches. For the annealed brass, it was actually a little tighter, 2.065 to 2.066. So we can see that that cartridge-based ogive measurement uh, for the standard brass, let's say this was the range of that uh, measurement there, the annealed brass fit inside that. So that should have made it slightly more uh, precise if that was a very important driver of precision. Maybe that's not. Overall, I've only fired half of this whole experiment, and uh, when I look at the overall results, they're really, really similar at this point, with the annealed brass being, just by the numbers, a little bit larger uh, in the precision measurements. In other words, not quite as precise. But 
Statistically, I would expect if we ran some statistics on those in an actual stat, uh, statistical test that they will come up as uh, or show up as no difference whatsoever. Um, too early to call on any of that at this point. We need to finish all 60 rounds, 30 annealed and 30 unannealed, and I'm ready to head back out to the range to shoot group or session number four. I'm going to be shooting the annealed brass first today. This is session number four and the last group or set of groups on set number two. 200 yards. Now you'll notice on that target down range I've got a couple more sighters in there uh, plus this is the same target I shot just a few days ago so I've got the groups in the upper left and upper right bullseye. I'm now going to be shooting at the bullseye in the lower left. Felt good. Looks like she flew a little high and off to the left. Felt really good. Not a good shot. Well, that one was fairly fast. That's more like it. Unannealed, unannealed, or standard brass target or bullseye in the lower right. Looks like I have a little bit of wind, mild wind, pushing to the left. I'm not going to do any holds. I think I'll be just fine. That felt good. 2581, you know, our velocities are pretty similar, which is good. They actually should be, they actually should be. Felt good. Well, that wraps up session number four. And in fact, in this one video, we completed session number three in the beginning and session number four. You know, I started getting concerned that every one of the groups that I shot first was always the smaller and more precise of the groups. So I thought maybe I was starting to see a shooter effect. But in this case, that debunked that, and I had tested that previously, but you never know if that's happening. Um, but this certainly debunked it. I had a 1.55 MOA group, not the greatest of group, one and a half MOA. And uh, the subsequent group, the second group, uh, was 1.01, .01, effectively one MOA. So actually, that was a, quite a nice group. Three of them right there, real nice in the bowl, two of them touching one another. So that was a, uh, a nice group. Now when I look at the consistency of these groups, this one that gave us a 1.55 MOA group, the annealed brass, also gave me a standard deviation of 27.5 feet per second. That is terrible. I mean, it really, really is bad. However, 
the non-annealed standard brass uh, posted a higher average muzzle velocity and only about a dozen feet per second of standard deviation. So things are tipping in the favor of non-annealed or standard brass working out better. But we're, we only have four of the groups in or four of the sessions in and there are still two more sessions to go. That will be covered in our next video, session number five, and then we'll be wrapping it up uh, after that session number six and a complete wrap up uh, at that time. So before we close, I did want to talk a little bit about our cartridge base to ogive measurements. Remember in this sessions two, three, and four, we were shooting what I called set two, and set two had three different subsets. The, the interesting thing is today's group had actually two very different cartridge base to ogive measurements. The annealed brass had the longest cartridge base to ogive out to 2.069 of an inch, whereas the non-annealed brass ended up with a cartridge-based ogive CBTO measurement of 2.061 to 2.063. That number 2.063, remember, was uh, some of the groups that shot really, really well in this rifle in a previous, actually, session number two. So we might inadvertently be seeing some of those sorts of effects and all of those effects may not be entirely due to annealing. That's why we're shooting six groups of each. Well, thanks again for watching. We'll be back in just a couple weeks with the next of our annealing experiments and trying to answer, does annealing affect precision?